Well, the, the coup attempt happened on my first day here in the Foreign Office as a minister. And I said straight away to the Foreign Secretary and the Prime Minister, this is very important. You've got to understand this. I'm going to go there. And for the UK, Turkey really matters. And it was our view that you've got to understand how serious and dangerous this coup attempt was. And you can't just sit there and say, oh, you know, be good boys. You know, this was a very dangerous and difficult moment for the whole of Turkey. So I'm very pleased that the United Kingdom very clearly expressed its empathy with and understanding of the coup attempt. And that's why I visited three times, the Foreign Secretary's been, the Prime Minister's been, because I think that a stable Turkey is essential for wider stability in the region. Turkey, just looking at Turkey as Turkey, has to be a functioning democracy. So we don't know all the details of who was behind this, uh, but we have some suspicions. And of course, Turkey has got to work this out for themselves, for yourselves. So we'd obviously urge the government to make sure that if you're locking people up or being tough on them, that you're getting the right people. There must be justice and the rule of law. But at the same time, I think the UK, and probably only the UK, has probably, properly expressed its understanding of what this was really all about. I think the rest of Europe was very slow to appreciate that this was a deep, traumatic experience for the whole country, and that it was wrong. And if you look at the coup attempt, but also the other terrorist threats that Turkey faces, where 500 people have been killed in terrorist attacks in the last year, uh, I think that instead of sitting in a comfortable armchair lecturing Turkey, it's better to understand what they're up against and work with the country to make sure that it can be stable and democratic and a very powerful and important force in the region. Look, I think the main thing is there is going to be a close and deepening bilateral relationship between Turkey and the UK. And this is demonstrated in the interest we've shown in Turkey by massive tourist numbers, by growing business activity, by the defence manufacturing deal which we've signed when the Prime Minister visited. And um, that is going to grow. Uh, of course, um, there's the slightly contradictory position where we're leaving the European Union and maybe eventually Turkey will join it. But that will not get in the way of our um, interest in and cooperation uh, with Turkey. Um, we, of course, will remain part of the EU until the day we actually leave. And, of course, um, if Turkey is to join the EU, it, it has to be principally an EU process with all of the uh, elements needed to join agreed between the EU and Turkey. And if that happens, that's fine, that's good. Um, as we leave the EU, we don't in any way want to um, disrupt it or cause it difficulty or weaken it. Uh, I think a strong EU is, is good for Europe, but we had a referendum and the decision was taken to leave it. There's trade, there's tourism, there's having a like-minded view on security in the region against terrorist threats and instability, for instance, in Syria and roundabout. So I think, you know, anyone who uh, wants to take an interest in the region of the Eastern Mediterranean cannot ignore Turkey. You've got to work with Turkey. And so, as I think has been demonst demonstrated by Prime Minister Theresa May, uh, Turkey's a very, very high priority for us and for me personally. Britain is a strong and proud parliamentary democracy and we think that we elect our government and if we don't like it, we choose another one. So it means that although we like cooperating with other countries, we don't like being governed by them. And if you take that into account, along with the objection a lot of people had to so many people moving in, too much migration flow, uh, people voted to leave the European Union. But we don't want to destroy the European Union or weaken it, and we are leaving this political club. We're not leaving Europe. If you look at the map, we're going to be in the same place. 
and we want to continue with cooperation uh, and indeed we want to look at the whole world. We are global Britain trying to reach out. We're not shrinking, we're not, sh we're not closing the doors. We, if anything, want to be, do many more things in trade and defence cooperation and things like that and we'll remain part of the United Nations, the, the, the P5, the G7, the G20, NATO and all of that. So this is not Britain getting smaller and more isolated, it's Britain being independent and different and if anything looking out even more than we were able to do when we were part of the European Union. Different countries want to get different things out of the European Union. Uh, for the Germans, they see it as something which gives them security and comfort and, if you like, constitutional stability and being at peace and cooperation with their neighbours. For us, it felt like a threat to the independence of our parliamentary sovereignty. So, you know, it can mean different things to different countries. So it's entirely up to uh, Turkey to decide whether you think it's in your interests because uh, it comes with compromises. On the one hand, you can have free trade, the free movement of people, uh, access to markets. Uh, you can sit around the table with all the other European members. So in that sense, it can strengthen your objectives. On the other hand, there is a European Parliament and a Commission and it will sometimes say, you have to do things this way. Standards, regulations, manufacturing, rules, competition policy, things like that. So it's entirely for you to decide whether you think this is a good thing for Turkey or, or not. Um, but I think my recommendation would be stick with the discussions, keep going, um, stay engaged, and in the end, uh, the possibility probably would arise where Turkey and the EU say, OK, you can if you want to, do you want to? And that's your national choice.